Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. So in today's little video, I'm going to discuss realistically if the whole engine swaps that are now buyable and special parts being buyable really did change up Gran Turismo 7. We've had it in the game for a week and I think most people have probably tested it out and really kind of got to grips with how the system works and I'm going to give you a bit of my personal experience and if I think realistically it was worth the wait and if it's really kind of changed up how GT7 now currently works. So last week we got update 1.34 released, we had the likes of the free cars being announced and the typical likes of you know events and such and then you know a nice little note that was uh, kind of there um, was the announcement that um, buyable uh, engine swaps and ultimate parts would be a thing under the ultimate tuning banner. Now there was some requirements to be able to get this unlocked, you must have been at level 50 to be able to do it um, obviously which is the maxed level so now we finally do have a use for level 50 after all. It only took them over a year to do this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I do think level 50 is quite a low level anyway. It's really not too difficult to get, you know, get to that level, to be quite honest. I've seen uh, a bit of a mixed reception from people saying, well, why does it have to be level 50? Um, kind of treat it as this way. It's more of a re reward for being at that maximum level. You know, it gives you, a, I guess, a reason and an incentive to grind towards that collector level 50 now. So my personal experience with kind of Bible engine swaps probably starts, I believe, around about September to August time of 2022. This was kind of something I was being frustrated with in terms of, you know, them not being available in Gran Turismo 7, being very much hidden behind RNG. I just didn't agree with it that a massive portion of the game, realistically, was hidden behind the probably the worst thing possible, which is the roulette wheel. Um, it was very kind of rare that you'd actually get given an engine ticket. In my entire time playing this game, I've had one single engine swap ticket off a daily marathon. And apart from that, if you get any of the other tickets, it's still very rare to actually be able to get the engine swap. You did have a few opportunities, I guess, with kind of the engine swap glitch if you was around them back in the day. Um, I know a lot of us kind of took advantage of that. And as well as that, sometimes with the extra menus, you got the chance to have a swap ticket. Same with special parts. You may get someone in, in a part ticket again. They're not as rare as the engine swap ones, but they are still very much rare. Most of the time, you would get them for a car that you probably wouldn't use anyway. So update 1.34 does drop and obviously it opens up this entire portion of the game that was originally hidden away behind complete look base. Now there has been kind of again mixed opinions on this. Some people think that they should be hidden behind RNG and there's others that are, well the majority really, that kind of wanted it like myself to be, you know, viable and, and, and open. You know, it does improve tunes massively. It essentially allows us to take cars that we may already have kind of reached a peak with and now tune them even more to get even more potential out of them. And it is a really enjoyable system. Now to those of people that kind of want it hidden behind RNG, in all honesty, I just don't see the point. I don't think it was a very fair system. It was never re rewarding in the first place. You know, the fact is now, you know, there's going to be more people wanting to put those hours into the game, wanting to grind the game to be able to get to the point where, you know, we can actually you know, be able to buy these swaps and such. There's more incentive to go ahead and actually stick with the game then relying on a roulette system that maybe once every few months you know you might have the possibility of getting an engine swap or these special parts for a car you actually want it was a really ridiculous system and in my honest opinion it just the roulette system in gt7 just does not work full stop it's uh, very kind of catered against the player than rather to them now from my personal opinion since 1.34 maybe it's just me but there seems to be more variety on that roulette wheel so there's kind of more i guess opportunity to get different things that we want not just money maybe cars and such i seem to be getting a lot more kind of tuning parts and stuff like that maybe that's just me personally i don't know about you guys you can let me know down, down in the comments below um, but i do think in you know this entire system now being viable um does kind of you know i guess make the roulette wheel a little bit less i guess worth it you know there's not really the incentive to have to you know rely on luck anymore i mean obviously it's always nice to get a little bit of extra bonus money um, but apart from that the roulette wheel is now kind 
kind of fading out from its relevance. Most people were there just hoping and wishing for an engine swap or a free car, and now we've kind of got these special parts and Bible engines. They're kind of taken away from the roulette wheel, and I'm all for it. I just don't think RNG works in a game. You know, if you want people to grind, you need to make sure they're feeling rewarded, and that's just something Grand Turismo 7 never really accomplished. So, to put those in a buyable perspective, it keeps us playing the game, it keeps us grinding for longer, and it keeps us testing out different cars. So, in my honest opinion, I think personally this has upgraded the game entirely and just given it a whole new kind of lease of life and a longer lifespan in general. It is such a weird thing that Gran Turismo 7 has its own kind of communities within a gaming community. So you've got the sport mode players that might not be bothered about tuning cars and such. Then you've got the tuners, the livery creators. So I think again this is just opening up the game and catering to more players than just a specific amount. Um, so again I do think it is a very, very good move. But that is just my opinion on it. You know, I've seen a lot of people kind of saying it's terrible a lot of people saying it's absolutely great i'm just kind of in the you know it's a good addition but it should have definitely been put in sooner and that kind of does bring me to i guess some other faults with the game you know let's talk car invitations this is another one now that i see a lot of people saying you've done this now do this now i fully agree with it they can do it earlier on in the game's life cycle they did open up the invitations and i honestly think this is something that they, you know realistically they should be able to do um, and you know they've proven they can do it so you know hopefully they do kind of start working on these little nitpicks that players have got and begin opening up the game more so it's not just reliable on pure luck I think it will keep the player base around more I honestly think it will just give the game a whole new lease of life now in all honesty do I think that the engine swaps and uh, bible parts really realistically improve the entire you know game for the majority of the play base i honestly think yes there's a lot more i guess what i've kind of took notice of recently in the custom lobbies there's a lot more of these kind of tuner lobbies and such being opened once again something that was around originally when the game first launched and especially when the engine swap glitch was around it does seem like a lot of players have come back you know it is a bit of a tuner's paradise and i honestly think this is definitely a step forward for grand Turismo 7 as a whole by taking away limited i guess limited items and such making them more accessible and just overall making it a much better quality product so if we look back at some of the features that we've had we've had the likes of the used car dealership which was much better implemented than i originally assumed it was much fairer than i originally assumed so they did a great job on that we've had psvr2 again very well implemented something that was originally a limited mode in gt sport is now the entire game pretty much um, apart from split screen and now we've had the next big feature which is bible engine swaps and ultimate parts and again i think it follows the format you know they they, they might not seem it like a lot of the time that polyphony listen to the player base but once they do and they start listening to what people want with this game they are pretty much absolutely nailing these features and once again i do feel that like update 1.34 with this entire system followed that trend of doing a very very good job for the game and overall improving the game so that is my honest opinion on it i think now the game is in a better place hopefully polyphony start kind of focusing on events and the rest of the lifespan of the game and just kind of you know i think we've got most of the features we want in there apart from maybe a few small minor ones but certainly they need now need to kind of knuckle down get the events in there maybe do a bit more tweak into sport mode allowing more events and such and really kind of just getting this game where it should be you know i know it's been a long long time but if we look where gt7 started and where it's at now it is in a much better and more comfortable place at least for the long term um, and definitely you know for the short term there's a lot more players currently you know being active in the game tuners are now back you know sport mode players are just doing what they've always done but again that's kind of where they need to turn the focus upgrading the game getting more events in there for the single player and just realize that gt7 as a whole is a product that not, doesn't just work for one type of player there's many different communities within this community and that's where they need to begin focusing and listening to those players because like i said most of the time when they do it they do get it absolutely spot on so there's my opinion on update 1.34 and the viable engine swaps and kind of looking at where gt7 should realistically head next
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss an upload from me. I upload GT7 and Motorsport related content each and every day. And a big thank you to my channel sponsors, Poggers and the Controller people for their continued support. As well as my channel members, you're absolutely fantastic. If you do want to become a channel member and you do want to kindly you know, join me on this journey of YouTube or whatever you want to call it in GT7 goodness, um, then please feel free to do so. I'm looking into getting some more bonus rewards for those you know, that kind of do jump on board the membership. Um, over the next couple of months again my discord my twitter and my donation link will be down in the description down below if you kindly check them out i'd massively appreciate it and feel free to come into the discord you know i do have my league and such all set up through there as well as my website and i will see you all later on take care guys peace